So B's update continues. He now has an all new upper body. Um, in addition to the amazing uh, head articulation mechanism, the files for the B2 Pro Head uh, update also include files for uh, a new upper body section. Um, now to be clear, it is not required that you uh, update your body, your upper body um, for the head mech, uh, even though you are going to be printing a new base plate here that has the enlarged access hole for the head mech. The uh, magnetic uh, mounting points uh, on this plate match the old head or, or upper body, so uh, you don't need to. But what does this uh, upper body provide? Well, uh, it includes these uh, access holes, uh, which are a great place to mount speakers. And then it also provides wiring uh, channels throughout the interior that make it a little bit easier for you to do your lit risers. So uh, let me take this off, take it over to the bench and give you guys a closer look at how this hooks up and how I wired it. All right, so there's a few things that I wanted to call out on this assembly that I thought would be helpful to other builders. Uh, first is the wiring interface. So uh, on the uh, base plate that I showed earlier, you could see the, the mating connection. Uh, these uh, connectors here are um, Pogo connectors manufactured by Milmax. Uh, these are not magnetic, uh, but they are fantastic for uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, if you look closely, you'll see that each pin has its own solder cup. Uh, this makes installation uh, much easier, and it also means that these can, I think, uh, support up to 16 gauge wire, um, and each pin uh, is capable of, of handling several amps each. I think it might even be up to five amps, which for a pogo connector is actually really good. Um, assembly for these is very straightforward. All you need to do is tin your wire, and then lay some solder in the soldering cup and then heat the two together and you're done. Uh, just don't forget the heat shrink. Um, and also make sure that you don't tin the wire, you don't over tin the wire. If the uh, tinning goes too far up in the wire, you're gonna have a hard time uh, making the bend on the other side of this connection here. Uh, one thing that I did notice that I had to do is it's imperative that these be completely flush so that they mate perfectly with the mounting plate. Uh, for these particular connectors, I think I got them through DigiKey, uh, I found that I had to remove the heat sets that are in there, chamfer the edge a little bit so that these flathead screws sat nice and flush. Um, so it worked really well. Let's flip this over and take a look at the other side. All right, so on the other side, you can see uh, where this, this comes up and you see the importance of being able to uh, you want to be careful not to over tin because space is tight. This will get covered up. Um, so four of these conductors are for the speakers and the other four are for the lights, uh, power and ground, and then two signal wires. Uh, I ended up having the two short riser lights uh, operate exactly the same. So they use the same data signal from the Arduino, which is downstairs, so to speak. Uh, when I wired this, um, DuPont connectors are about the only thing that's going to fit in this space. Um, you could choose to do straight runs all the way through, but um, <laughs> I ended up putting the connectors in here because I wasn't confident in how long each of the wires needed to be. This just gave me some flexibility while I was assembling. Uh, so that pretty much covers uh, the data that gets up here. Uh, let's take a look first at the speakers uh, and how those are set up, and then we'll take a look at the risers. All right, so when it comes to audio for B, as you can see, you've got four speaker locations. You have the right channel, you have the left channel, you have the forward and the rear speakers. Uh, so that means two speakers per channel. Um, now, when it comes to using multiple speakers on a single amplifier channel, you do have to take into, a com er, into account how you're going to wire those speakers. Um, you can wire them in series, you can wire them in parallel. Now, just like when you wire batteries in series or parallel, you impact their uh, the voltage or the capacity. When you wire speakers in series or parallel, it's going to uh, dictate what the overall impedance is presented to the amplifier. Uh, impedance is basically the speaker's resistance to current flow. So higher impedance means higher resistance and less current flow. Lower resistance would be lower resistance, thus higher current flow. 
when you connect speakers in parallel, that is positive and negative from the source to each one of the speakers in turn, uh, you end up reducing the overall impedance presented to the amplifier. Wiring them in series has the effect of increasing the impedance. Um, in my particular case, I did some side-by-side -side comparisons. Parallel wiring is more common. Um, some people claim that there is better overall performance. I really couldn't hear any difference. And so what I decided to do was wire mine in series. And the main reason for that is uh, the amplifier that I have in B is pretty small. I don't want to risk overdriving it by presenting a 4 ohm load. So by wiring two 4 ohm speakers in series, they present as an 8 ohm load to each channel of the amplifier. So that's what I've done. Wiring them in series basically means that the positive conductor comes in here for, each, for, for the one channel, comes in here to this speaker, the negative from the source goes all the way around to this speaker, and then there's a single conductor that connects the negative terminal here to the positive terminal there. Um, and that's basically how I wired each of these channels. I've also become a big fan of these JST SM connectors. Um, these are, I really prefer these uh, for interior wiring connections uh, over the DuPont connectors, mainly because uh, these have a shroud around the male pins, so there's much less risk of, uh, of anything becoming damaged or shorting. Um, they also provide a very uh, secure connection and they're easy to disconnect. So uh, with that in mind, I can go ahead and install the speakers into the cavities. Let's take a quick look at that too. So if we take a closer look at one the inside of one of these cavities, you can see in there that there is that indentation, that little shelf there. Uh, the intent for that is that uh, these speakers, these are um, exciters from Dayton Audio. You can get these from Parts Express. Uh, they have a pretty cool uh, IMS. It's an interchangeable mounting system. And uh, these are screw-on adapters. I got some extras here um, that have some VHB tape adhesive on them. And these just screw right into the exciter itself. Um, this is what will end up being... Uh, pressed up against the outer surface. Now I did notice that the radius here is not an exact match, so this is actually going to end up sitting a little bit a little bit high, but at least it will be supported there. Um, so that's essentially how you're going to install these. Now one other uh, little piece of advice, I'll find one here. Um, in Dave's video, he um, showed or he had a picture of a little wiring uh, loom that he used to help drop the speaker in. This is a really tight fit. In fact, you kind of have to angle it a little bit. There is uh, a threaded M3 size insert there, and I found that um, simply threading a long screw on here gives you the ability then to manipulate it and drop it into place. So I uh, still need to do that. Um, I'm still testing the audio on this, but so far it's sounding pretty good. So that's about it for the speakers. Let's move on and talk a little bit about the riser lights. All right, so this uh, connection point here is just for speakers. This one here is intended for the riser light. So there are four conductors, as I mentioned before. Two of them are for 5-volt power, which comes from downstairs. And then two of them, the white and the blue, are the signal connections. This gets a little bit messier, unfortunately, because uh, there are lights in three of the four corners. Uh, the large riser is here, and these two corners... Uh, contain the short risers. Um, what I've done here is I've um, included one of my servo breakout boards um, and then uh, unfortunately I had a hard time uh, connecting two conductors to this side of the JST uh, connection. So instead I just have the single uh, white signal wire going into a Wago. That's where it splits and then connects to the breakout board. So this connection here powers everything and then I simply have three uh, three conductor DuPont connectors going from each of the corners into here. And I mentioned this in a previous video. Um, I'm using the lights from printeddroid.com. Uh, so you do have to be very mindful of the, uh, the pin order. Um, the servo breakout board is a typical servo connection. It has the five volts in the middle, signal and ground on each end. But the lights from Printed Droid have signal in the middle with ground and five volts on either side. So you have to be careful if you connect it incorrectly, you could end up damaging the lights. Um, so also a word too about the risers. So 
in the print files for the Pro Head Mac for this upper body, uh, there are risers included there that are intended for use with the lights from GreenWave. They have uh, threaded insert sized holes uh, pre-positioned so that you can mount the light boards in there. If, like me, you're using the lights from Printed Droid, uh, you need to use the risers that are available in the mods folder um, that are specifically set up for those lights. One difference, however, is, and you can see if I zoom in here, um, because the speakers are going to be mounted above the lights, the stock risers, as well as the risers in the mods folder that I'm using, uh, the uh, the tab that sticks up in here is too tall. It will interfere with the speakers. The risers that are part of the Pro Head Mac, those have already been modified and shortened. I had already printed mine, so uh, what I ended up doing was I just took a hacksaw to it and just literally chopped off the top uh, quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch of the, of the risers. You could also go into your slicer. You could just add a negative volume and you could just uh, lop those off in the slicer and make it look a little bit prettier. But just be, uh, be warned that you will need to modify the risers uh, to make sure that everything fits. So I'm definitely happy with this updated upper body section. Uh, one thing that also was a little unexpected for me um, is I hadn't expected to need to reprint this particular Greebly mechanism, uh, but it turns out I did. And the reason being is the old one, uh, this little notch here, uh, the, on the, the new upper body files, uh, this is a little bit deeper, um, and the my old Greeble just wouldn't fit uh, quite right in this little spot. So just be warned that if you are going to use this upper body, you are going to need to uh, reprint this uh, piece as well. The ring that is going to be hanging underneath here uh, should be fine. I should be able to reuse the old one. Um, in terms of order of operations, once I button all of this up, I will then attach the neck section in the middle here. Um, and then once that's on, the spacer, Lazy Susan, and ring will go underneath. Uh, in terms of the lights themselves, um, I had a little bit of fun with the sketch, actually having watched, rewatched season one of Andor recently, um, seeing what B's ladder lights do. Um, this one here just sort of randomly lights uh, different rows, and then these here, I wanted a little splash of color, so these simply uh, fade. All of them are the same color, but they do fade at a regular interval. Pretty basic, but it uh, I think it's pretty effective. So what remains? Um, I still need to uh, work on B's new hat. Um, I need to do some updates to my transmitter, and uh, all of this is in preparation for DroidCon. Oh, and I also have a couple more I have his lower front and rear body panels that are sitting there. They need to be textured and painted. Uh, yeah, there's little bits of B all over the workshop. Um, so anyway, uh, we are making great progress here. I look forward to seeing as many of you builders as possible at DroidCon. Uh, I'll be posting some more updates shortly. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.